Hi there, and welcome along to After Effects Tutorials. Um, today we're going to be taking a photograph, and we're going to be creating some movement within that photograph. This is a technique that is often been described as the Ken Burns effect, whereby we have a photograph and we sort of separate each element out from the image, and we move them uh, backwards or forwards in space to achieve depth in an otherwise flat photograph. So let's get right into it. Um, I'm going to import a file and this is a layered file. It's a Photoshop layered file. I want to ensure that it comes in not as footage but of course a composition so that way I'll have full access to all of the layers and they'll be coming in a bit like that. Okay, so let's have a look at what we've got here. I'm going to double click out here and have a look at what we've got. So I've got three layers, and of course, this you could have as many as you wanted, but I've got something in the foreground called tree. It's not much of a tree, more of a stump, really. I've got an actor in the background, and of course, I've got a background. Um, okay, so each of these elements have been cut out in Photoshop and layered and named, and that's a very good way to be going about this thing. Okay, first things first, we need to create the 3D uh, space for each of those elements. So that very simply is checking that box there. And we've now got a 3D object. Okay, nothing much has changed, has it? Okay, so let's, next thing to do is to create the camera. And that's simply via layer and a new camera. And there we go. Okay, so it really doesn't matter what kind of camera you use. Um, you've got everything from your macros up to your telephotos and everything in between. So, um, look, I'm going to go with 35 and we we'll, can fiddle around with this as we go along. But I'm just going to say OK for that now. OK, there we go. I've got a camera. Now, the best way to work with cameras, I believe, is to uh, instigate another view if you like. So I'm going to come down here where it says view and I'm going to ask for two views. Now I've got two views of my document here. Um, now you can have what we call a custom view, you can have custom view 3, you can have all sorts of cool things and uh, yeah look what I'd like to do is go from the top. This sort of makes a bit of sense to me. It doesn't look as pretty but I'm going to go from the top. Okay, so now all of my layers are sitting flat on top of each other. Think of a pile of papers on the desk. There's no space separating them. I'm going to put my background position. I'm going to get access to the position of the background, so pressing P on my keyboard. And I can send that back in space. And as I can see, it appears to get smaller, but it's really not getting small. All is happening is just going back in space. It's receding. Okay. Um, okay, so I'm kind of happy with that. I'm going to bring my tree, if you like. I'm going to do the same thing with position. And I'm going to bring that a bit forward. So it looks like it's getting a bit bigger, as you would expect. Things in the foreground uh, appear bigger than things in the background. Okay, so that's pretty good. One thing I notice here is that my um, my background image, or my, uh, yes, the background image, it's getting clipped a little bit, isn't it? So what we might want to do if that sort of happens, we're just going to go over to my background now, and I'm actually just going to scale it up a whisker. So, so it's going to account for the movement that I create with my camera. Okay, so we haven't done anything with our camera yet. So I'm going to come over to my black view over here and I'm just going to press command minus to pop out. And I can see down here, there is my camera. Okay, this is where the good stuff happens now. By clicking on this icon, I can then move this around and get a sense of space. Okay, so there'll be... Um, it might be issues with clipping at the edge here, so there's limitations set to my size. But again, it's a matter of putting things in so everything's sort of uh, not 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 sort of finding the edges, if you like. So, okay, I'm just going to come back. Maybe I might come over to here. So I'm going to come along here, and I'm going to come and click a keyframe position. I'm going to come across several frames. What have we got here? 
we might just do that two seconds so 200 in my clock there and I might just sort of come around here so a bit of a subtle sort of a track camera and I think I can sort of go that far okay so there is my animation it's giving me that sort of perception of uh, depth if you like um, and I certainly could fiddle with that more and more um, so I've got a four second uh, comp and I might just press N on my keyboard there just to uh, tidy things up there and uh, um, just so things sort of finish on that point there okay so there's my thing Tip the space bar and there is my animated uh, animated Ken Burns style image so there's a lot you can do with that you might be able to track backwards and forwards you might be able to track backwards and forwards while going left and right so it's really a very nice uh, effect I'm just going to come in here and so any time you want to change the camera's position you can put a keyframe in and perhaps maybe get in a bit closer on this uh, timer so you've got the bezier curves there so you're going to sort of increase that sort of sense of depth so a lot of fun you can have with that and look I hope that was clear and um, keep practicing and I'll see you in the next video